Let's define what we mean by the period of motion. The period, symbolized by capital T, is the time to complete one cycle. In the SI system, typically the best unit to use for period is the second. Frequency, on the other hand, symbolized by lowercase f, is the number of cycles per second. Typically the unit that we want to use for frequency is hertz. And the numerical relationship between period and the frequency is that they are inverses of each other. For example, if it takes two seconds to complete one cycle, then the number of cycles that would be completed each second would be one half. If it took three seconds to complete one cycle, then the number of cycles completed per second would be one third. So the period and the frequency are inverses of each other. For mass spring systems, the equation governing the period of the mass's motion is shown here. 2 pi times the square root of m over k, where m is the mass in kilograms and k is the spring constant in newtons per meter, the tightness of the spring. Note that the amplitude of the mass's motion does not affect the period of a mass spring system. So this mass spring system that's shown on the right here, if I were to get this moving by pulling this mass back a bit and then letting it go and then it will oscillate back and forth. If I pull it back a little more the second time it will still take the same amount of time to go all the way over and come all the way back. That's what we mean by the period of a mass spring system. Let's do a problem. We're going to take a cat and attach it to a fixed horizontal spring that has a certain spring constant and we're going to set it in motion. And this cat is going to oscillate back and forth. Find the period of motion of the cat. In other words, how long does it take the cat to go all the way over and come all the way back. We know the mass of the cat. We know the stiffness of the spring. Please go ahead and type this into your calculator. Make sure that you take the square root of this entire quantity here. Don't take the square root of 5 and a half and then divide by 22.8. Make sure you take this quotient first, take the square root of that, and then multiply by 2 pi. It takes about 3.1 seconds for that cat to go all the way over and come all the way back. Suppose we detach the cat and put a mouse in its place. Same spring, same frictionless surface. Everything is the same in this calculation with the exception of the mass. And we note here that the mass must be in kilograms. We can't have the unit grams in our equation. So be careful of that. There are certain units that are okay. Perhaps it isn't surprising that the mouse will take much less time to go over and come back because its mass is so much less. Let's say now that we want the cat and the mouse to oscillate back and forth at the same rate. In other words, what stiffness must a spring have so that the period of the mouse's motion is the same as that of the cat? So the first thing we need to do is solve this equation for the spring constant k. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi. I'm going to square both sides to get rid of the square root sign. I'm going to cross multiply to get rid of any fraction. And now I'm going to get k, the spring constant, by itself by dividing both sides by t squared, which leaves me with this expression. We want to know the spring constant for the case that the mouse, which has a mass of 0.12 kilograms, would have the same period of motion, 3.1 seconds, as the cat. And not surprisingly, that is a much flimsier spring if we want the cat and the mouse to oscillate back and forth together. One more time, the period of a mass spring system depends only on the mass and the spring constant, not on the amplitude. 
if it did depend on the amplitude, we would expect in this equation at the top of the screen to see a variable like capital A, but we don't see that.